Hallelujah. Such a joy and honor to be with you all in this uh, blessed day. Uh, God is good. Amen. I always say God is good. He does only good things. Devil is bad. He loves and knows only to do bad things. But we have a best God will turn every evil for good. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, are you excited? It's very important to be excited for the word of God. So I, I humble and uh, honor to be a man of God. So humble to be with him, uh, to know him through Pastor Mano. Like uh, some couple of uh, months back, I was able to be a part of NLF uh, Bangalore Church for three days meeting. So uh, praise God that through him I was able to know the uh, pastor. And I was able to be a part of your worship this Sunday. I believe God has a word for you. God will speak to us. There is life in God's word. The Bible says in the beginning there was word. So that means before the beginning there was word. So we can be sure if there is a word there has to be a beginning. I don't know what is your situation with what expectation you are here. What is the situation that is making you cry or depressed or sad. Everything has come to an end. But I want to tell you this morning. This very moment, believe something supernatural to happen in your life. I believe in supernatural things because I believe in God. I believe in miracles. You know, I have not come to preach about a dead God and go back. I have come to give, amen, preach about a God who gives life and who moves with powerful things and who brings resurrection in our lives. Hallelujah. All our disappointments will be turned into a divine appointment with God. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be a challenge for your challenges. You can be a problem for your problems. Amen. You know, while we were praying for Manipur, that is what has come into my heart. I believe something supernatural is happening. I visited Manipur a couple of weeks back, you know, because we have our mission work happening in Tamalong district in, uh, uh, in near to Imphal. It's like around 118 kilometers away from that place. Uh, you know, city... A lot of places have been devastated as we are hearing. Uh, you know, around 80 to 90 lives have been lost. More than 40,000 people are in, still in the jungle. We need to pray. We need to carry them in our hearts and pray that God's favor would visit our place. Amen. And God will move very powerfully. A lot of things, you know, I know because it's going on air. You know, I don't want to disclose certain things, but you should know God is also at work. God is really moving. Something supernatural move of God is happening in different cities among the Metis and the Kuki tribes, you know, where the problems are happening. You know, uh, uh, we should pray that God would have mercy upon everybody, even the people who are bringing the rights, because they don't know what they are doing. You know, they are being controlled by the spirit of darkness. That is the reason why all these things are happening. We have to pray that God would bring chaos in the camp of the enemies. And God will bring supernatural favor upon our land. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe this morning God is going to do something great very personally in your life. Very personally. You know, I, I, I truly believe, uh, you know, anything can happen. I know my time is very short. You know, I want to stay into the timing because God is a God of order and standard. But I know, you know, even within, within a wing of an eye, God can turn things upside down. Hallelujah. So be very expectation, be with an expected heart as the pastor said. Even if you are in a critic mind, no problem, you will receive it. You will receive the best from the Lord. So, uh, you know, because we know that we have come before the Lord and God is able to do something great. So before going further, let's close our eyes and just thank him. And for what, amen, he has planned for us for this day, what the Lord has in store for, for us for this Sunday service. Let us believe that our hearts will rejoice in the Lord and uh, Lord, let us pray that God will open our hearts of understandings, eyes of understanding to open and prepare our hearts to receive the word and help us to understand, the, amen, what, what the Lord has planned for us this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you because there is life and power in your word, O oh God. We thank you because you are in control of all the situations and we pray that, Father, you would have your way in our midst. 
you will reveal your power and your glory in our midst father we thank you because there is there is healing in your word there is redemption in your word there is new beginnings in your word there is restoration in your word father we pray in the name of jesus none will go back empty handed even from the child to the elderly people who are seated here there will be clarity in the word that is being spoken in this place and god will touch their hearts and god will bring joy to their lives amen because your word is powerful your word is life your word can create things in our life oh god and we are here with a great expectation in your presence oh master in jesus almighty name we pray amen i was so surprised to see the scripture you know not only the scripture the, you know the promise what you have received in this year when i came here i, I was seeing this uh, you know boards you know uh, i saw it as the year of restoration hallelujah it was really connected with the message what has i mean uh, led in my heart while i was traveling from uganda back to uh, i mean uganda to uh, dubai yesterday i was supposed to come day i mean actually day before yesterday because i had some problem with my leg uh, i got a sprain and i have to just uh, postpone my tra travel date for one more day so i was meditating uh, uh, in the presence of god the lord has put in my heart some words which is really connected to this so i believe uh, god has a great plan and amen it, there is going to be a new beginning for someone's life i want to tell you i, I don't know to whom it is coming you know uh, there is there is you are going to acquire certain things you know some people are going to sign up certain documents uh, this season is going to be a season of establishment in someone's life Amen. This is what yesterday night the Lord has spoken to me. There is going to be establishment. Amen. God will give you the ability to take over things. And some documentations are going to happen very soon in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Where it seems to be no way God opens way. You know the Bible says in Joel chapter 2 verse 25. You know the ears the locusts have eaten. The Lord says I will repay it back. To you in double portion it took years for the locust to eat but the lord says to give it back it will be like this it will be like this are you able to believe i mean now we are in the immense amen uh, seventh month let us believe amen seventh month is going to be glorious glorious you might say that it is going to come to an end no no problem uh, for god amen even even seven days is fine seven days is fine not even seven days seven second is fine for god to do or reverse things in our life hallelujah so so let us be with an expectation always you know i will say we need to have a heart of gratitude because you know gratitude the you know heart of gratitude will always take us to a next level of altitude in our life the bible says with five loaves of bread and two fishes jesus lifted it up and said praise god the bible says it multiplied when peter looked at the five loaves of bread and two fishes he said not even half of my stomach will be filled with this because it's like small at least it is small <laughs> five loaves of bread nothing can be done with this but you know the bible says when it came to the hands of jesus when he lifted it up and gave glory to god the bible says it multiplied amen the attitude of gratitude will always lift our altitudes amen let us learn to give glory to god in every areas of our life and we will see things happening in a glorious way hallelujah so as pastor said i am an evangelist you know i i love the tag Evangelist, I did my MBA from Karunia Institute in, back in Coimbatore in the year 2006. Then God gave me a uh, grace to, uh, uh, you know, work for Wipro for eight days uh, in Bangalore. And uh, uh, ninth day, I stepped into full-time ministry by giving the paying back three months salary because it was on bond that time. <laughs> and I'm stepped into full-time ministry. My God is good. A job without any retirements. <clears throat> So he is faithful in his calling and God is good. From 2007, I am into ministry uh, as an evangelist traveling across the nation of India. So God has blessed us with eight trucks, not two trucks, eight trucks. Uh, we have, uh, <clears throat> we called ourselves as ministry on wheels. What we do from Trivandrum, I come from Trivandrum, Trivandrum to Jammu Kashmir, we travel crisscross from, even from Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh too with um, eight trucks and we move across and do the crusades. So we have a crusade team of 80 members in, you know, uh, put together in all together in eight tracks. What we, how we move is uh, we uh, work with the local churches and we do campaigns. You know, in our campaigns, by the grace of God, 
10,000 to 30,000 people to come up in every crusade. Uh, and we are able to reach uh, uh, amen, India through the power of gospel. We know in India, 748 districts we have. Out of that, God helped us to preach at least one crusade in 346 crusades. You know, districts in, in India, preaching the love of Jesus. You know, preaching in India is not easy. Uh, we know that what is happening. Uh, you know, when I smile and, uh, when, you know, whenever I stand in the pulpit, I, I, I always, I will smile and preach. But should know that I don't have teeth. All my teeth are duplicate. All my upper, la la anybody from Gujarat here? Nobody? Okay. Right. So, uh, because I, <laughs> it happened in Gujarat. Uh, in Surat, in the year 2012, while he was preaching, somebody came and hit me with the butt of the gun. Uh, Eleven teeth fell down. All the top level, 12 are duplicate, but I still love preaching Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. A lot of, you know, I, I don't want to magnify this, you know, negative part of the things, but I want to tell you, uh, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hate shall never prevail over it. Amen. Jesus is lifted up in our nation. Lot of problems are there. You know, I have been beaten up several times, put behind the bars eight times, not for days and all, just for hours and uh, maybe two days I, have, I was there once in Bihar. And recently we had a meeting in Jammu Kashmir. I was, uh, we were, not only me, myself along with my 18 members of TREE, we were tied up in the rope and we were dragged towards the police station and they threw the cow dung over our faces. Uh, but a lot of things happened. I was put inside the locker for four hours. But after four hours, the person who came and, you know, who filed a case against us, he forgot for what purpose he came to the uh, police station. Later on, we had a cup of coffee together and no FIR was filed and we went back happily. <laughs> the person who gave us the ground to conduct the meeting, he was a priest. He belongs to some other religion, don't want to mention the name. So, and uh, after the meeting, the next day what happened, this guy called up our pastor who uh, gave us the permission to do the meeting, co sorry, coordinated the meeting and uh, said, you know, we, we are not able to, you know, stay in that place. You know, there is, he said... There is some vibration happens when we cross the ground where you had the meeting for two days. And the people who are crossing the place, you know, this particular place are being healed when they walk into that. So ask that person to come and do a church. And he gave 25 cents of land just, see, four hours inside the jail, 25 cents of land free. So four years inside the jail, India will be ours. I am ready for that. I am ready for that. Come on. See, if you can get that spirit of evangelism, I want you to clap your hands and glorify Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, <clears throat> amen. So this morning I'm here to tell you all Christians are missionaries on non-believers are your mission field. Not necessary, you need to come to North India to do ministry wherever you are, you can bring glory to the name of Jesus. It's very important if you say you are saved, if you are not sharing about the love of Jesus, your salvation is suspicious. Hello? Are you with me? Once again, I want to repeat that statement again. If you say you are saved, if you are not sharing about the love of Jesus to anybody, your salvation is suspicious. I am not here to condemn anybody, but I am here to encourage you. You are called for Jesus. You are called to build the kingdom of God. Amen. You are powerful. Look at your neighbor and say, you are powerful. Not your problems are powerful, not your situations are powerful, but you are powerful. I will say not only powerful, you are dangerous. Ray, you are dangerous. We always say devil is dangerous. Hey, pastor, devil is bringing that problem, devil is creating this problem. You know, this is happening in my company. No way, you, when you know the truth, you will know that not your devil is dangerous, but you are dangerous to devil. Because you carry the DNA of Jesus. Amen. You can be a problem for your problem. Amen. You can be a depression for your depressions. One day the Lord told me defeat the defeat before the defeat defeats you. Amen. You can defeat your defeat before the defeat defeats you. You know, uh, you know that is my testimony. Actually, I come from uh, Kerala, you know, from Trivandrum, the capital of Kerala. I did my schoolings in Malala Medium, you know. Uh, I know a lot of people are maybe, one or at least some people are there. From Kerala. I did my schoolings in Malala Media till 8. At the age of 18, I don't know even how to say. A reply for anybody asking me, what is your name in English? I used to smile at them. That was my situation. You know, one day what happened, we had a 
huge crusade happened, uh, you know, campaign uh, organized by Jesus Calls Ministries, late Dr. DGS Dinagaran. He was there in my place. It was a huge massive meeting, around 40,000 people showed up in that meeting. I was on the choir team. I was uh, just singing along with the team. After the singing session was over, I went to have a cup of coffee. And this man of God, as usually, took the mic. He began to sing a beautiful song. In between, he stopped and he said, there is a boy called Anu Jacob, come to the stage. I was thinking, you know, I was standing at the last. I was thinking in my heart, there will be hundreds of Anu Jacob. At least if you would have mentioned my shirt color or pan color, I would have responded. But he didn't say, I didn't go. So what happened? When I came home, my dad said, why didn't you go? I said, if he calls my name the next day, definitely I'll respond. So what happened after the next day, second day of the meeting, after the singing session was over, I went to have a cup of coffee. One of my uh, cousin brother, he brought one ruby groundnut and we were eating the groundnut and discussing the songs. So as usual, this man of God, he took the mic, he, he started singing. When he was about to start singing the song, while the music was, you know, uh, the, <clears throat> yeah, the introduction interlude was going on in between the stanzas, uh, he stopped and he said, there is a boy called Anu Jacob. Your name was called yesterday, but you didn't respond. Now you are eating groundnut. I threw the groundnut packet down. <laughs> I came running to the platform. He looked at me and said, Anu Jacob, you are going to preach in English. Only one prayer I had. Lord, you should not ask me what is my name in English. Because I know <laughs> what is my standard. I was shivering and standing like this. You know, praise God, there was translated. He translated saying, this is what this man of God is saying. And he said a lot of things. That's it. And uh, while he was going home, my cycle got punctured. I was carrying over my shoulders on the way back. The Lord told me, Brother Dinagaran doesn't know your name, but I know your name. Amen. It is not your standard. My standard makes a difference. That's it. God changed my life. The same Anu Jacob who was afraid to stand for two people. God took me to all the 29 states of India preaching the love of Jesus. <laughs> and including... Including UAE, God took me to 72 countries preaching the love of Jesus. I want to tell you there is no word called impossible in the dictionary of Jesus. Come on, you can defeat your defeat before the defeat defeats you. Come on, somebody get connected and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are powerful. You are really dangerous to devil because Christ in you is a hope of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's come back to the message what the Lord has put in my heart for Samuel chapter 13, verse 18. Amen. For Samuel chapter 30, 30, 30, verse 18, the Bible says, And David recovered everything the Amalekites have taken away. Amen. Only the first part. Okay. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord wants you to understand. Amen. Amen. This season is a season of recovery. Amen. The message what the Lord has put in my heart is the title of the message is discover to recover. Discover to recover. You need to discover to recover. If you say you want to recover what the devil has stolen from you, you need to discover. You know what we do usually what... No, can somebody give me a little monitors, if possible? Amen. So, if when we when we say when we speak about discovering, you know, usually if you if you lost something somewhere, what 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 you know what usually we say, you need to go and find the place where you lost it, or you need to just go back to the places where you walked in. If you lost a phone, or if you lost a pen, or if you lost anything which is important, you know, the usual statement is go to the place and find where you lost. But, you know, in the spiritual point of view, when you talk about what God wants us to restore things, it is not about discovering where you lost, it is discovering who you are. Discovering who you are to recover what you have lost. Discovering who you are, discovering your position, discovering your identity, understanding who you are to take over what the devil have taken from you. Hallelujah. So when you know you are, you know, you are, you are positioned in Christ, because the devil wants us to understand not our positions, all our conditions, all our amen, problems, all our situations. You know, devil wants us to understand and speak about our problems, speak about our conditions, and, and get depressed and dejected out, you know, be, because of that. But do you know what God wants us to understand? Not our conditions, but our position. You know, because of that, what we do is we remain in our condition. We cry unto God saying, Lord, I want you to have mercy upon me. I want you to do something for me. You know, by re remaining in our pain, remaining in our situation, remaining in our chaos and confusion,
confusions that we are going through we cry unto god saying lord do something for me but god says no i don't want you to stay in your condition and pray you need to step up to your position your position is you are the child of god washed and purchased by the blood of jesus you are not the result of that amen disobeyed adam you are the result of the obedient adam the last adam jesus who restored everything who recovered everything who he who is the life giving spirit come on look at somebody and say jesus is the life giving spirit hallelujah that's what the bible says in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 Amen. First Adam was the recipient of life. The last Adam became life giving spirit. Hallelujah. So who are we? We are not the recipient of the first Adam. We are the result. We are not the result of, of the first Adam. We are the result of the last Adam. That amen 14 amen 1545. Yeah. Was Corinthians, right? Okay. we are the result of the last adam that is jesus who is a life giving spirit so that means you and me are life giving spirits hallelujah that is the reason why the bible says in john chapter 7 Amen verse 37 it says on the last day of the feast Jesus stood in the Jerusalem temple and before the Jerusalem temple and he said if you are thirsty come to me and drink you know out of the people who believe there shall flow the rivers of living waters come on say rivers Come on make you can make a little better rivers amen you know what is the specialty of the river rivers cannot rivers close rivers cannot rivers that is the specialty of the river amen so when the devil say you know come on you will go back to the place where you started you will go away that's enough you will fail you need to say that i don't have a rivers gear so what You need to you need to look at the devil and say come on what to do it's a manufacturing defect i don't have a reverse gear you know one day i was waiting in the frankfurt airport in germany uh, i was uh, my flight was delayed actually after some time i was just um, sitting and uh, they announced okay the flight is about to come in another uh, half an hour so i was just looking through the window i saw my flight came that ca- the passengers you know the flight that can carry almost 700 passengers so uh it, it was almost uh, coming into the parking bay but they parked in the wrong way suddenly i saw one small truck like what we have came and it was attached to the back of the you know, flight maybe you would have seen several times right that was the first time i noticed and it started pulling this flight back i was thinking come on what happened to this flight uh a flight that can carry 700 plus passengers a truck is pulling it behind yes. no i was thinking what happened to the reverse gear then only i understood there is no reverse gear for the flight but the lord told me it gave him gave me a spiritual meaning saying the one which is designed to fly over continents has no reverse gear if you are designed to fly over the continents you don't have a reverse gear this morning you need to believe you don't have a reverse gear because you are called to fly high hallelujah when the devil say amen come on you will reverse you will come back to the place where you have begun everything will come to an end you need to say no way i don't have a reverse gear i am called to flow move forward this morning god is telling to somebody move forward move forward i don't know to whom you know the lord says maybe you say that i am in a danger i i don't know what to ha- what to do and how to move forward when the israelites were standing before the red sea behind pharaoh is coming do you know what the lord says move forward move forward it was like they were sandwiched between pharaoh and the red sea and they were they were in the middle the lord asked moses you know don't think too much just move forward god in say that i will open doors god said just move forward i don't know to whom the word comes move forward your confusion will go just move forward your worries will go uh, they amen you will you can just move forward don't wait for a breakthrough in your, in your life if you wait for a breakthrough you will be waiting all through your life just walk through you will see a breakthrough amen if you walk through definitely you will see a breakthrough hallelujah confusions will get out when you say amen and walk through the if you are ready to walk through the city.
land of Canaan. They went and they saw the land as the land of milk and honey. And they came back with evil report. Out of the twelve, ten people said, we cannot conquer the land because we have seen the descendants of Anak there. So we cannot conquer it. You know what Joshua and Caleb said? No, no. God has told. We are going to proclaim. We are going to take over. We are going to proclaim. We are going to take over. This morning, this is what God says. You are into the seventh month. Just proclaim what the Lord has spoken over you. Just proclaim what God has spoken over your life this year. The promise what the Lord has spoken over your family, over your church. Just proclaim. You will possess what the Lord has spoken over your life. Hallelujah. There is going to be a supernatural beginnings in your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. New things are going to spring forth. That is why the Bible says in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, don't think about the former. Don't think about the past. I'm going to make everything new. And new things are going to spring forth. New things are going to spring forth. Come on, open your mouth and say new things. New things. New things. You know, I believe our God is a God of surprises. He will surprise you with wonders. That is why Micah chapter 7 verse 15, the Bible says, I will make you see wonders. Wonders. In Numbers chapter 17 verse 5, the Lord said to Moses, hey, you don't worry, you don't worry about what the people are speaking. You know, you, you need to bring, you know, the, the, the roads of uh, different tribes, collect from different tribes and put it, you know, write their names and put inside the tent of witness. The, I mean, the road which I have chosen will blossom. That's what The road of which whom I have chosen will blossom. Amen. That means you are are chosen to amen to sprout you are chosen by the lord for a new beginning amen how many of you believe i am chosen how many of you believe that yes i am chosen by the lord if you believe that you are chosen by the lord get ready for a new beginning get ready for a new beginning i want to prophesy over your life this season amen god will surprise you with wonders not only God will surprise you, God will make you a surprise. Hallelujah. God will make you a wonder. People will look at you and say, wow, it is God's doing and it is marvelous. Oh, hallelujah. In the year 2023, before December 31st, God will enable you to say, it is Lord's doing and it is marvelous in my eyes. If you believe, shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I know something supernatural is happening as the word is entering into your life. See, the word has the power to create things. The word has the ability to bring something new. That is what in Luke chapter 5, verse 5, the Bible says, Peter said, Master, we have told the whole night, but we haven't caught anything. But for your word, I will lay the net again. Hallelujah. You know, I don't believe in my ability. I don't believe in my experience. I know my experience failed me. My friends failed me. My studies failed me. Everything I failed. But I believe in your power of the word. I believe in your word. The Bible says, he got a very big catch. I call it as a net breaking catch. Are you ready for a net breaking catch? Net breaking catch or we can call it as a record catch. Amen. You know, first Peter would have said, Lord, what are you saying? You are just a carpenter. I am a fisherman. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I am a creator. Amen. You know, you are only just fishing in my creation. My word can create things. Even if there is no fish, it will be created by the power of his word. Come on, it will be created by the power of his word. I don't know. Some positions are going to be created for somebody in your job. Some positions are going to be created. Maybe you say that there is no such po I mean, position for my qualification. God will create it for you. God will create it. God will create it. Come on. Come on. If you are able to connect with this word, I want you to say amen. Because the word of God is powerful. Hallelujah. You know, when we read the Gospel of John chapter 4, you know, 4, from 36 onwards, it talks about a nobleman, king's man. Verse 52, 51, beautifully, the Bible says, you know, this man, nobleman, he came to Jesus with an expectation saying, Lord, my son was, my son is at the point of death. I want you to do something. He saw the reality through his eyes and he came to Jesus. He came to Jesus saying, Lord, my son is at the point of death. I want you to come home and lay hands on him so that he will recover. He will, you know, he will live. I want you to just come to my home. 
See, he came to invite Jesus saying, I want you to come home, so, you, know, you know, before my son dies. I know that when you come home and lay hands, I know miracle will happen. Do you know what Jesus said? Go your way, your son lives. Verse 50, no. See, go your way, your son lives. It's, it, it is as if he says, I don't want to come take my word and go. Just imagine I'm calling Pastor Charles and saying today morning, you can download one of the message and put it, you know, uh, display here, I'm not able to come. Says, you know, I can preach better message than you. <laughs> See, this is, this is the same way Jesus answered to this nobleman. This nobleman came to invite Jesus to his home, to take him home. But he, this man says, I'm not coming. No, so Jesus says, I'm not coming, take my word and go. That is why he says, go your way, your son lives. But the Bible says, he believed the word. He carried the word. He went his way. He didn't see anything to believe, but he believed to see something. Are you ready to believe to see something great? Before you walk out, amen, before 11 o'clock, are you ready to see something great? Hallelujah. Beyond your expectation. Something supernatural and glorious is going to begin in your life in Jesus almighty name. Hallelujah. Where our experience cannot enter. Where our status cannot enter. Where our influence cannot enter. Jesus will do miracles. Jesus is able to perform miracles for us. Hallelujah. You know here the Bible says he received the word. He believed the word. He went his way. On the way he was greeted by his servant saying, oh, oh, nobleman, king's man, your son lives. <laughs> Actually speaking, he was not excited. That's what the next word says. He was not excited. He was just encouraging them, tell them what time it happened. I don't want to know what is the news. I know that it will always happen because the word has already come. I am sure that the word has the power to create. But I wanted to know what time it happened. Immediately the servant said, 7 o'clock, amen, yesterday night, 7 o'clock, the fever left him. Because, he, you know, he said, yes, when I received the word, I was already excited. When I received the word, I know the word will bring miracles. If you are able to believe this morning, amen, morning 10.34, as the word is coming for you, miracles are happening. Miracles are happening in your family, in your workplace where you are amen business amen where your status experience have failed the word of god is entering and bringing something new for you hallelujah if you believe clap your hands and glorify jesus glorify jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah. In this very minute, something supernatural will happen. I want to prophesy over someone's life this morning from the word because the word is life. The word is power. As you are responding to the word of God, amen, you need to know somebody is responding for the miracle. Maybe you, you know, you have seen somebody, amen, you know, if sick. Maybe you would have heard somebody at sick bed. Amen, you are going to hear good news. Good news are awaiting. You are going to be greeted by good news. Hallelujah. In other words, I will say, the nature of the news are going to change. Oh, hallelujah. You will not be worried about the evil tidings because victory belongs to God. He gives a victory. He will change the character of the situations within no time. God is able to change the character of the situation within no time. Within a wink of an eye, God can do it. As you say, Amen, miracles will be established. As you say, Amen, the power of God will begin to manifest. As you respond to the word of God, the power of the word will begin to manifest in your life. Hallelujah. I believe in miracles. Even this morning I know supernatural healings are going to happen. You know, as I stand here, you know, I, 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 the Lord is telling me very specifically somebody with a pressure inside the eyes. Amen. Glaucoma. Somebody with a pressure inside the eyes, the Lord is touching. I know, you know, one, two, three, fourth row. Fourth row, somebody the Lord is touching. Somebody, yeah. Yes, that's what. That's what, fourth row, one, two, three, four. Supernatural healing is happening. Glaucoma, the power of the Holy Spirit is touching in it. Amen. Uh, somebody is L4, L5, L4, L5. Amen. The Lord is touching somebody's back, back, the spinal, the Lord's glory. L4 and L5, uh, the power of God is touching. Supernatural healings are taking place right now. Amen. Be with an expectation. The word brings miracle. 
the word brings miracles you know i don't stand because of the gifts i stand because of the word of god the word of god is powerful i don't you know i i i i believe where the word is preached the miracles will take place i believe the word follows with signs wonders and miracles amen as you say amen even back in your home in india miracles will happen miracles will happen miracles will happen miracles are happening in jesus name restoration of health restoration of joy restoration of peace restoration of your prayer life restoration of your commitment restoration of dedication is happening this morning in jesus name hallelujah come on give the lord a mighty hand of praise just say hallelujah hallelujah the word of god is powerful amen let's come back to the word see the bible says david recovered everything what the amalekites have stolen what he lost in his life how he lost everything see the bible says when you when you see from first samuel chapter 30 verse 1 onwards the bible says he had a victory over over you know over the enemies and he was coming back to siklag he saw his city being turned into ashes city was in fire amen the bible says you know they he lost everything along with his fighting men along with the people the warriors who he had you know their children their wives everything was the position what they had was taken away from by the amalekites and they turned the city into fire it was turned into ashes they, and they were worried what's for if you read for samuel chapter 30 verse 4 the bible says and david along with the people lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep again hallelujah they had no more power to weep again what does it mean there should be power to weep also this man lost the power to weep again now come let's understand who is david he was a worshiper who was david he was a man with god you know man of god's own heart he was not only a stage worshiper even he was worshiping off stage even if nobody is there, no instrument is there, no mic is there, nobody recognized him, he worshipped. He was such a man who was carrying the heart of God. For him, there was a season of crying. Hello? When you look into your life, you say, I have not done anything bad. I didn't do anything which is not pleasing the sight of God, then why I go through such a period of tears in my life? I know I'm speaking to somebody. That, that phase is called the period of silence. We can call it as a period of silence. This man who, is, who had, you know, received the certificate from God saying, you are the man after my own heart. He was a worshiper. He gave everything Every priority to God in his life. He kept God in friend. Always God, God, God. But he went through crisis. He went through a period of silence in his life. I want to tell you the period of silence is going to come to an end. You know what, what do you mean by silence? From Genesis to Revelation you are reading left and right. But nothing seems to be talking to you. You're calling a pastor and say, Pastor, I don't know what is happening, a dry period. I don't know why there is no answer. Even pastor is not able to encourage you. You're calling your friend, you're you know, calling a prayer tower, or you're seeking the face of anybody. You're fasting for 21 days, 7 days, 40 days, but no answer from heaven. You feel like God has forsaken you. That is called the period of silence. I don't know to whom I'm speaking. Are you going through such a situation in your life? But this morning God says, your silence is going to come to an end. Your silence is going to come to an end. Maybe you don't know why you are going through such a phase. Maybe you don't know why is that sorrow that is pricking my heart. You don't know why I should go through this problem. This morning I want to tell you. Your morning will be turned into dancing. John chapter 16 verse 20. Your sorrows will be turned into joy. You will see restorations happening. God will restore it. Restore it. Restore it. Un uncommon losses. Unnecessary wastages. The Lord is going to bring things back in your life. Hallelujah. God is closing certain holes that is, you know, that make you to lose everything what you, what you get. 
this morning the lord says i'm going to patch it up and i'm going to bring something new in your life i'm going to restore things back hallelujah and god is able to do it only god can do it hallelujah amen see restoration of health is going to happen to some people's family some some families who are going through health conditions not only one person in their family going through one after other it's like waves one when one notice lose and another note is being tied up one problem is solved another problem is coming in uh, you are trying your level best to come out something something or other is happening in your families uh, such a recover recurring recurring problems is going to come to an end in jesus name in the name of jesus i know a family deliverance is happening i don't know to whose family it is coming in a family deliverance is coming in the name of jesus restoration in your family restoration of peace restoration of health health particularly health in jesus almighty name why don't you clap your hands and glorify jesus hallelujah just few moments listen to me the bible says amen david lost everything he saw the city into fire when he saw the reality this man was broken he had no more power to weep again he began to cry he began to cry unto god tears after tears they not able to see any any good things there they were worried they had no more power to weep again the bible says see now what happening what is happening there when you read chapter you know for samuel chapter 30 words 8 after after two words uh, chapter 6 sorry chapter 6 the bible says and everybody see now David was greatly greatly distressed for the people sp- spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved this was grieved every man for his sons and his daughters but David that's that's a that's a where i want to uh, i mean emphasize see but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God hallelujah many times you know i will say what your tears cannot do your position in christ will do the bible says everybody were greatly distressed even problem happened for david he also cried and and all other people they were focusing on tears alone but you know what he did he shifted his focus from the tears to god this morning if you are ready to shift your focus you will see a restoration if you focus on your tears if you focus on your condition that's what the devil want you to know devil want you to do speaking about your condition talking about your condition still the problem is there speaking 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 about the problem always see that is what happened to abraham also when you read genesis chapter 12 when the lord asked him to go to the place where i will show you he left everything he went to the place called haran amen you know the bible says in you know genesis chapter 12 when you read from 6 onwards he built an altar in haran the lord began to bless him there was a famine in the land chapter chapter 12 verse 10 the bible says there was famine in the land the famine was severe listen to this now there was a famine in the land Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there for the famine was severe in the land come on say severe in the land not for Abraham hear that the bible clearly says there was a famine in the land the famine was severe in the land not for Abraham Abraham took it for himself that is the problem with us there was a famine in the land not for Abraham but you know what he did he opened the windows and he saw the famine in the land he spoke it inside the home this is what is our problem we don't understand our position but we speak what is the problem you know when you are in the position this is what happened to job also when he was inside the protection of god the bible says he was protected he was protected there was a hedge around him hedge around his household he didn't see but devil saw but inside the heads around him and his household he begin to fear what he was fearing i don't know what will happen to my children what will happen to my family what will happen to my asset but it happened because he feared what he feared it happened that's what the bible says hallelujah 
See, this is what happened for Abraham also. He had no famine. In other words, I will say the famine could not touch this man of God because he was not in the land, he was in the hand of God. Hello? He was not in the land, he was in the hand. Amen. You are not in this land. You are in the hand of God. Amen. The Bible says, he opened, you know, he, he saw the famine in the land. And he responded to the reality without giving priority to the truth. The truth is, the Lord said, I am with you. Hallelujah. That's what God was doing. King Abimelech was astonished the way the Lord blessed this man. He said, hey, come on, you are becoming more richer. Where? In the land of famine. That is what God can do. But he saw the problem. He spoke the problem inside the home. The Bible says he went down to Egypt. Okay, let's leave that subject. But we need to know that when you speak about the problem more and more, you forget to see the plans of God. Hallelujah. When your eyes are open to the problem always, when you speak about the problem always in your home, in your prayer, when you speak about the conditions what you are going through always, you don't see the hand of God. You are not able to see the hand of God. But what you have to do, amen, you need to understand your position in Christ. You need to recover what the devil has stolen from you. How? By speaking the word over your life. By speaking the word over your family. By speaking the word over the situations. See, the Bible says about a lady who was suffering with the issue of blood for 12 long years she lost all the money she had she lost all the money she had she was not getting better rather she was growing worse five things were negative told you years problem he lost. she went to a lot of physicians ayurveda allopathy homeopathy everything nobody could deliver her she lost all the money she had she was not getting better rather she was growing worse but she heard about jesus when she heard about jesus the bible says she said come on say she said what she said, she didn't say that I lost everything. She didn't say that, oh no, nobody will give me loan. Nobody will treat me. Every, every doctor has failed. Nobody will love me. Nobody will care for me. No, nobody will recognize me. She didn't say that. She said, that is not my concern. She said, if I touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, my sickness will die, but I will live. Come on, somebody shout a big hallelujah. She said, my sickness will die, but I will live. I will live. What does it mean? She became a prophetess of her situation. You can be a prophet of your family. You don't need another prophet to come and lay hands and prophesy. You don't need, you have the word. You need only five rupees worth Indian, Indian rupees. Five rupees worth mirror. That's enough. Hang it up somewhere. Look at you. Look at the mirror and say, you are blessed. You need to say, you are favored. Highly favored. <laughs> you are more than a conqueror. You are important to Jesus. You are privileged. You are prioritized by, prioritized by Jesus. You are called by Jesus. You are the result of his blood. You are protected. You are preserved for a mighty purpose. Speak it over your life. That's what. You need only a five rupee worth mirror. Understand your privilege. Understand your position. Through the word of God, speak it over your life and reign in life. Hallelujah. That's what when, when, when David fixed his eyes on the Lord, he strengthened himself in the Lord. What is the secret? Fixing your eyes to the Lord. Take it from your problem. Take out your eyes from your problem. Fix it unto Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, in other words, I'll say, when he fixed his eyes on Jesus, do you know what happened? Verse 8. Just we'll read 8 and finish. Uh, Samuel chapter 30 verse 8. First Samuel chapter 30 verse 8. See, and so David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Come on, who was this man? Verse 4, he was crying. He didn't have, he didn't have power to weep again. That was his situation. But the same man opened his mouth and saying, shall I chase? Mind you, God didn't say. He said, he said, the same man who was in tears said, shall I chase? How can he say that? 
when he fixed his eyes on to god when he strengthened himself with the lord he understood i am not a loser but i am a chaser hallelujah this morning i want to tell you when you fix your eyes on to jesus you begin to understand you are not a loser you are a chaser amen hallelujah i will say this and finish i will say when david saw the city being turned into fire he understood when he strengthened himself in the lord he understood the fire inside me is greater than the fire that is burning outside hallelujah this morning i want to stop my message by saying the fire inside you the revival fire inside you restoration fire inside you redemption fire inside you is greater than the problem that you are seeing outside the greater than the fire that is burning outside amen if you can fix your eyes on jesus you can be strengthened in the lord shall we all rise up to our feet come on amen hallelujah let's all open our mouth and glorify jesus this morning thank you holy spirit Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.